Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar where we will be doing an introduction to bloodborne pathogens. So the first question we're going to answer is what is an exposure control plan? So an exposure control plan or an ECP is a plan that directs how employees respond to exposure to pathogens and typically includes the following. A briefing of personnel who may be exposed to pathogens directly, a list of all employee responsibilities that may result in exposure, rules set to ensure compliance to OSHA and the requirements of other governing bodies such as the Joint Commission, rules regarding re research or production of antibodies of deadly bloodborne pathogens such as hepatitis B and the human immunodeficiency virus or HIV, proactive vaccination protocols for hepatitis B, communication measures used to educate employees such as this course, record-keeping policies for any such exposure, and policies for immediate actions after exposure. Bloodborne pathogens are basically any germ or organism that resides in an infected person's bloodstream. These pathogens may be transmitted by any substance that may contain blood, including sneeze droplets, urine, feces, seminal blood, fluid, and all other bodily fluids. Most bloodborne pathogens do not cause immediate symptoms, but they can still be transmitted to other individuals. Furthermore, some bloodborne pathogens can result in death. The symptoms of hepatitis B and C include jaundice or yellowing of the skin and whites of the eyes, fatigue, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, loss of appetite, and liver damage. There is a vaccine available for hepatitis B. If you have not been vaccinated previously, an employer is required to provide one if you may be exposed to hepatitis B. It is part of the three-set series and each dose must be spaced out by approximately one month. If you have started the series and failed to complete it, your employer may send you for a blood draw to verify the presence of hepatitis B antibodies. The symptoms of HIV infection can mirror many of the symptoms of the flu. However, general symptoms may include fatigue, appetite changes, unexplained fever, and swollen glands. Moreover, HIV infection increases the risk of contracting other, other diseases and developing acquired immune deficiency syndrome or AIDS. The information about bloodborne pathogens can be disheartening, but exposure does not mean you become infected. Following proper protocols can help reduce your risk of infection. So if you're ever exposed to bloodborne pathogens, there's a correct way to react. So exposure to bloodborne pathogens in the workplace can literally happen anywhere, including bathrooms, patient rooms, hallways, and laboratories. These steps can teach you how to respond. First, protect yourself. Then, act immediately. After that, clean the area. And lastly, tell your supervisor. Don't forget we offer online bloodborne pathogen certification on our site. You can find a link in the description. We encourage you to become certified as soon as possible, whether that be in your own time with an online course or in an in-classroom setting. So thank you so much for tuning into today's webinar. We hope to catch you the next time.